Remind you a lot of the Auburn game, Larry, where uh, the dogs kept making mistakes, but they were still in the ball game, and yet they were able to come back and win it. So maybe history will again repeat itself. Penn State has not had a turnover all night long. Dogs have had two. Is Penn State going to run right at him now to get that little short two yards? It's about a yard and three quarters or so to go. And they go to the fullback, Williams, and he burst in. He got hit on the line, but he may have had the first down when they hit him on the 29. Will Forts hit him. Ken Sims, a young defensive tackle, hit him. It should be a first down for Penn State. Do you realize that the famous Lions, or the Beast of the East, as they call themselves, led 20 to 3 with 60 seconds and a half? And Lassinger threw him down the field 66 yards and got us back in at 20 to 10. And then the dogs control the third quarter and cut it to 20 to 17. Now it's the fourth quarter. Bloody war for the national championship. Georgia having a linebacker stepping in a gap in the line and then they're over back two. And Blackley's going to give it to Warner and he bursts out off that left tackle and comes all the way out to the 40. Again, I said this early in the third quarter, I've been waiting for them to merely run it and run it and run it all night. Tony Flack, the cornerback, had to come up and help and yank him down. And Warner is down. He burst out and got about 10 and a half. Give him 11 yards to the 41, and Warner's down. He could have a cramp again or a hamstring pull. Phil? Well, when Warner came back into the ball game, he kept holding the back of his legs, and yet he has run ever so hard since he came back in there, and he's the man that Penn State is going to. Georgia gambled a little bit on that play. They brought uh, Hogue from the right side. They were thinking that maybe Penn State would throw the ball to keep him off balance, so they were going to blitz with Hogue coming off the corner, but that wasn't the case. And now we're going to break away. We'll take this 30-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. I'm Johnny Lee. You know I've tasted about every beer in the bar. And the one that hits the spot for me is Slits. Behind every Slits is a man who knows beer. Ask a man who knows how he picked this one here. Cause he's tasted the rest, and the taste makes it clear. Behind every Slits is a man who knows his beer. Here's some Slits Brewing Company. He'll walk. Warner is able to run off the field. They worked on his legs. It was leg cramps again, but he goes off to the sidelines, and you know that he'll be right back. Well, right now, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Georgia Bulldog Network. University of Georgia Sugar Bowl football is brought to you by Texaco, Schlitz, Capital Cadillac, and Delco maintenance-free batteries on WSB Radio Atlanta. I mentioned that uh, Butch Clifton unable to make the trip down to New Orleans. He was planning to come, but illness in his family, and look forward to seeing uh, Butch again when we get back to basketball action as the dogs go to Tennessee on Monday night. But right now it is football and very critical. And LSU leading Nebraska in the third quarter. Can you imagine that? 17 to 7. Penn State flops a tight end around over to the other side, technically giving him an unbalanced line. Blackledge looking at a tough six-man front. And he goes to his tailback. Hogue grabbed him, and then they took two or three others. They got four yards. That's Skeeter Nichols, the number two tailback. They block well enough on the right side of their line. And the dogs, Hogue, could only hold on his arm and force the linebacker and Sanchez, a safety man. Had to pull him down, but the game, well, I'm going to give him five to the 46, second and five. And Kurt Warner has come back in. Penn State trying to drive it down. They had it in their pockets, sewed up and gone. 20 to 3 with only 60 seconds left and a half, even less than that. And the dogs rallied. It's 20 to 17, 13 36 to play in a ball game. Georgia has it down to three. But did they get too far behind? They're acting like they're going to push people. Here comes Warner springing out wide to one side. Sanchez finally rolled a block with him. Thurston trying to help, but he got six or seven wide over to the 48. So they got six, and then they got about seven more. Stand early to the end, Jeff Sanchez, the safety man. Penn State driving, 13-24 to play. They got a three-point lead. And with that particular run, Warner's gone over 100 yards now in 15 carries. He's at 104 yards. Herschel Walker's carried it 27 times for 96 yards. Penn State up to the line. They are in an eye. Blackledge with two men split out, one short and one wide. Dogs are in a 5-3. Blackledge, fairly long count, fakes a trap and comes back to throw. A lot of time. Long bomb, and there he is. Touchdown.
yards they struck suddenly to Greg Garrity the split end. Blackledge threw it 100 miles an hour. Boy, that ball is zipped. And it's 26 to 17. He's really got an arm. A sudden long bomb. They ran two plays and got about 12 yards. And then turned around and he just threw it long and deep down the side. And he beat the defender four or five yards. And Penn State has gone out in front by nine again. Gonzatano will try. Gonzatano will try the extra point. The lead is nine. And the kick is up. The kick is good. 27 to 17. Penn State's gone back out by 10 with a little over 13 minutes to go. Timeout, 60 seconds. Network break here on the Bulldog Network. Reach for the star, you can trust your car. Reach for the star, do the products with the star. Reach for the star, the big bright Texaco star. If your car knocks, it's probably undernourished, so put it on a diet. Texaco's Super Unleaded Diet. It's got higher octane than regular unleaded to help knock out the knocks. Reach for the star, the big bright Texaco star. Reach for the star. the Army offers you a two-year enlistment with skilled training, travel, and college benefits. See your recruiter. Be all that you can be Cause we need you In the Army Paid for by the U.S. Army. Todd Blackledge has been the offense for Penn State as he has now thrown for over 200 yards He's completed 11 out of 19 passes for 211 yards. Both teams wanting to go long in this football game. Uh, extremely evident, and uh, Blackledge has been very, very successful in doing it for Penn State. Nice Momanka kicks off high and short for Penn State. Coming to one side, young Keith Montgomery takes it on the 5 to the 10 and tripped himself and went down around the 20 before somebody could really hit him. Georgia is 10 down again after making such a tremendous comeback. Now they really got the goal. And the clock is against them. Because you get the impression with Blackledge that he might suddenly strike you. In two minutes, they just moved at 81 yards. Just boom, just like that. He throws it so hard. Dogs are inside of their 20. They're on a 19 and a half. They're in an eye, two in front to the right. Penn State flops around. There's a five-man front. And McCarthy trying to slant off outside to the left. And got a yard or two. Ken Kelly, the outside linebacker, wouldn't move. And the Penn State student body across the way really roaring. They have felt the momentum change, and it has. Penn State's got a man down. McCarthy slanted out and got to the 21 and a half. He got two yards. It'll be second and eight. Dave Opfar, our Penn State's defensive right tackle, is down. A lot of heat out there. You can see players put their hands on their knees sometimes during timeouts. And I remember from last year in the Sugar Bowl seeing that a lot. The heat in this place is so tremendous. Penn State with a man down, 13 minutes to play, and the lead is 10 points. He is still down. Take time out here, 60 seconds. Local messages, Bulldog Network. Contractors, homeowners, do-it-yourselfers. Go to Kofer Brothers Building Supplies on Main Street in Tucker and see the winning lineup of Quick Read products. From patios to fence posts, from basements to brick walls, Quick Read is quick and easy to use. Just add water and mix. Quick Read offers a complete line of home improvement, maintenance, and repair products. Quick Read is the quick and easy way to tackle any home improvement project. Put Quick Read and Kofer Brothers on your team, and you're sure of an easy win. That's Kofer Brothers Building Supplies on Main Street in Tucker, just two miles outside the perimeter. Kofer Brothers, always helping you build better. Hunker down to Stereo Village for the best bulldog bargains in town. Score big with savings on TVs, video recorders, Atari games, hi-fis, car stereos, and home computers. No frills, no gimmicks, just top-name brands at no-name prices and the best home entertainment sale prices Atlanta has ever seen. Most quantities are limited. When it's gone, it's gone. So it's first come, first served. Don't miss this opportunity to score big and save at Stereo Village. Prices have never been lower. Let's pause 10 seconds here for station identification. This is the Bulldog Network. University of Georgia Sugar Bowl football is brought to you by Kofer Brothers Building Supplies, Stereo Village, and Hardee's on WSB Radio Atlanta.
George on the 21 and a half on their second down at eight. Jamie Wisham splits wide to one side. Erwin Archie slotted with him. Penn State's in a 4-3, pointing and howling. Uh-oh, flags now. Wait a minute. Let's see what happens. Maybe a penalty on Georgia. You realize they made a couple of immediate procedure penalties in the third quarter. Now they've just done it again. LSU 17, Nebraska 14, late in the third quarter in Miami. Georgia now penalized back five yards of the 16 and a half. Dogs now long yarded, second down, almost 14. Trailing 27 to 17 because Blackledge hit him with a long bomb. Boy, that hurt. They had really climbed that hill, that thing. Slot to the right. Lastinger looks at the slot. Penn State jumps into a 5-2. And Lastinger in trouble. He goes to the sideline, and it is dropped at the last minute because somebody wrecked him. Kevin Harris turned around and jumped in the 25. It was coming into his hands, and he got hit hard by Chris Snitter, the number two cornerback, and he dropped it. It's going to be third down and fairly long yardage, Phil. The last thing I had to throw under extremely heavy pressure yeah. that time. He had a man right in his face, and just as he let fly, he got hit pretty good. Third down and 13 and a half. Georgia shoved back, bad field position. They've had only one semblance of a break tonight and they couldn't move it after an 18-yard shank punt. And they were only down three when that happened. Four-man front, Lastinger in trouble. Decides to run straight ahead to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, and six. Not enough. Got about 10 yards. The two show the tackle. Hugs the outside linebacker. The gain was 10, but a fourth down and four. 12, 27 to go. 27 to 17. Penn State will not fumble. They will not throw an interception. They will not let the dog secondary save us as they did so many times this year. Broadway to kick. The one time tonight when he hung one up better than 50 some odd yards, they almost ran it back the whole way. Then he gets off another long one. Broadway a long, long kick. Kevin Baugh, fair catch around the 28. Broadway got his foot into it very, very well. Around 45, 46 yards. And Penn State's got the ball on their own 28. You see, you can't worry about those two running backs because of what Blackledge might do all of a sudden. Got a great arm. 27 to 17. Penn State by 10. They led 20 to 3 in a closing second to the half, and the dogs struck suddenly and got one on a quick march down the field in less than 60 seconds. And then they got another one early in the third quarter. Penn State on her own, 28. Blackledge underneath. He's got an eye. Got a double slot off to the right. And he goes to Kurt Warner, who jumps back in the line. And Tim Crow grabbed him on his back from up above. But he got about four. Countering back over to the left. And Warner may be down again. He may have that leg cramp again. He's had that problem in his career. And it's unfortunate because he is a tough running back. And the referee will have to stop it again, and the Penn State trainers will have to come out again. Warner only got three, they say, in a play with a knee at the ground. It'll be second down and seven. Charlie Dean is in Tony Flack's spot, by the way, out at defensive cornerback. Penn State's Kurt Warner is still down, 11.43. He's sitting on the ground while they try to stretch those muscles. Their lead is 10 now. And for many minutes, the dogs had at the three, and they had their hands in a ball at least twice during that stretch and could not move it, maybe three times. Penn State student body across the way really chanting and roaring. Well, what do you got? Well, Warner down, and of course, as we mentioned earlier, those leg cramps have been a problem for him all year long. It, he finished 10th in the Heisman Trophy balloting, and uh, Blackwoods, by the way, was 6th. But uh, if he gets 100 yards, uh, they seem to be in pretty good shape. Uh, in fact, I don't think they've ever lost when he's had over 100 yards rushing in a football game. Lauren? Uh, Phil, uh, that little situation with him gives the Georgia defense an uh, opportunity to get a little rest. A little breather on the sideline here. John Casey, uh, one of the offensive line coaches, is really talking to the Georgia offensive line. He's going over things with them, telling them that, look, uh, we're not out of this football game yet. When we get the ball again, we have got to do something. We've got to put some points on the board. The clock, plenty of time left. The Georgia's got to stop them first and then do something when they get the ball. Second down of seven. Kurt Warner has walked very slowly off the field now. Penn State on their own 32. 
Peter Nichols and Joel Coles, the number two tailback, number two fullback for Kent State. And an eye, they flip flop and bring a tight end over to the right side. George is in almost a 6 2, not quite. And somebody crashed and grabbed the number two tailback, Nichols, behind the line, knocks Culpepper. A young linebacker blew in there and hit him a couple of yards behind the line. And had to hang on to his, yeah, he had to hang on to his leg for dear life, and Tim Crow had to help him. Tim Crow's having a very fine night on defense. This is Jimmy Payne with all those operations that's had to in the few plays that he's played. Ball back in the 30, lost two. Third down, about eight and a half, actually, to go. It's on the 30, and I have to get the 39. Third down, about nine. Not quite a full nine. They're in an eye, two men split wide. George is in a kind of a 5-3. Black that's coming back. Flags down. Wait a minute, they may have taken too much time. You've got 10.40 to go, and the lead is 10 points, and Penn State's got a 27-17 lead. You remember all the times this year. Remember early in the year, had injuries in the offensive line. That secondary kept saving us and kept saving us. Black just ran back out on the field. Penn State's going to be penalized five yards. Delay of the game. Back to the 25. They're now third down and about 14. The only one break at 18-yard shank punt, and we couldn't move it. Had the ball on our own 45 after a very bad kick and couldn't do it, and we were only three down. George are getting Dean off fairly on time at the end. Black had come on, and a couple of tackles tried to come out. First one and then another. Penn State's third and 14. And Blackledge back to look. Got the time. Dumping it. And it's complete. And then they hit him, but it's a first down. Kenny Jackson, the flanker, came across the middle fairly deep. And they got about 16, 17 yards. Give him 17 to the 42. Tony Flack hit him. And Blackledge got him a big first down. Boy, he throws it like a bullet. Lauren. Hey, uh, this is Vinny, the press Vinny sideline now, because he just lobbed that ball up. He had something on it, but he went up over the defense, and he's a tough guy to stop. He just had too much time, and he's mixing his plays very well. Penn State slots two men to the right. Dogs in a 5-2, not quite a 5-3. Hogue is drifting around to one side, and they pitch it to Nichols. He broke a tackle and came driving to the 46. Skeeter Nichols, the number two tailback, had enough blocking and line charge on the left side. He ran behind Ron Heller. Great big left tackle. Freddie Gilbert and Stan Dooley knocked him down. And the gain on the play was four. It's second down and about six, Phil. That previous completion, typical of the Penn State offense when they run those crossing patterns. And that time, Jackson came scooting across the middle again. Got open. Second down, about six. Single running back, slot left side, wide receiver right. Penn State has driven it up to almost a 47. Little sideline pattern, threw it low and complete on the Georgia 45. And for Greg Garrity to split in. Clock stop 9.07. It may seem early to you to start calling a clock stopping, but the lead is 10 points. It's not seven or three. It'll be third down and about six. And again, a very critical third down as far as Georgia is concerned in this football game because as you say, nine minutes and seven seconds left. Penn State on her own 46 and a half, and they have to go to the Georgia 48 for a first down. They need five and a half yards. Exactly. One running back. Slot left, one wide man. They go to the running back, and he jumps in there and breaks it off, and John Williams goes driving down to the 40 and a first down. Stan Dooley from behind, a defensive end. Had to yank him down, and on a very quick hitter in there, he got about 14 yards to the Georgia 40 in a first down. Stan Dooley from Dakota had to knock him down. Nine minutes. Jack Lindsay, bad legs and all, has come in. Ken Sims out at the tackle. Lindsay wanted to play in his final game. No, he knows he's got a knee operation. If he hurts that knee again, he expected that, he said. Penn State on the 40. The clock running in their favor. They run to the tail, and he got knocked down right on the line. Skeeter Nichols, the tailback, try to run a power shot in there. Knocks Culpepper, a young linebacker, one of the first men that hit him. And it'll be second down and about 10. 8.24 to go. Penn State controlling the clock and the lead. Lindsay out, Culpepper out. Charlie Dean has run back in. They got a 10-point lead in a little over eight minutes. 
Catfish Jackson has come out. Dogs in a 4-3-4. Virtually a five now, and they go to John Williams, coming off left tackle. He got hit behind a line, but slid it up and got about four. Somebody slid in and grabbed his feet to slow him down, and that was Tim Crow again, and then Sanchez and Gilbert had to hit him. Crow slowed him down from behind, but they got four to the 36. 7.43 to go. Penn State leads by 10, 27 to 17. You got half a quarter now. They've got the clock and the scoreboard, unless something funny is going to happen. Blackledge walks him up to the line, and here's a big third down play. The dogs need the ball desperately. And then they got to go all the way when they get it. Blackledge looks, turns, single tail back, and they run Williams outside, and he's grabbed and rolled out around the 32. Tommy Thurston, a linebacker. They sprinted him over to the short side. Stan Dooley, rather, the defensive end. It was Stan Dooley, not Thurston. He got about four. Blackledge over there looking at Paterno and the coaches. Penn State's going to be fourth down and only a yard and a half. And they might call time to talk it over. Because they could have command of the ball game maybe forever here if they make it. Timeout, 60 seconds. Local break on the Bulldog Network. Capital Cadillac and Delco maintenance-free batteries want to remind you that in today's cars and trucks, the battery has many jobs to do. There are power windows and antennas to raise and lower, headlights dash and signal lights to light, windshield wipers, cruise control, radio, tape decks and rear window defrosters to power. The Delco Freedom 2 battery does all these jobs superbly and has plenty of reserve power to start your car time after time. And best of all, it never needs water. So come into Capital Cadillac 2210 Cobb Parkway where the Delco maintenance-free battery is now on sale. Reach for the star, you can trust your car. Reach for the star, to the products with the star. Reach for the star, the big bright Texaco star. You know those knocks in your car? Well, it's time to knock them out with Texaco Super Unleaded Gasoline. It's got higher octane than regular unleaded to help knock out the knocks. Reach for the star, the big bright Texaco star. Reach for State has put the punter in, Ralph Giacomaro, with fourth down and a yard and a half. They're on the dogs, 31 and a half. Not everybody does believe that they're going to punt. They're on the hash marks in the far side. They didn't want to try a slightly bad angle for a field goal from out there. They're acting. They've lined up on a punt. The dogs don't trust them. They aren't rushing seven or anything. Fourth down, a yard and a half. He takes the snap and he tries to pooch the kick, but he kicks it way too high and too long and just kicked it way over the end zone. Georgia gets the ball back with 7-10. And if they don't take it all away now, they are really in bad shape. Phil? Well, it was Georgia with the momentum in the third quarter when they dominated, but here's Penn State getting things to go their way early in the fourth quarter, and they've now jumped in front of Georgia, at least in total yardage, with 336 total yards to Georgia's 289. Of course, 48 of those yards coming on that long touchdown strike and one single play. The dogs now need one single big play to get right back into it. Penn State has controlled the first half of the fourth quarter, and a three-point lead has gone to ten. Seven minutes, blasting her, pitching it to Chuck Jones. Jones is going to try to throw to Herman Archie down the middle. Incomplete. Two men covered him on the 47. Dogs ran the flanker Chuck Jones around, and he tried to throw a long bomb to Herman Archie and didn't get quite enough on it. Dipnor, the cornerback, and Robinson, the safety man, covering Herman Archie. Dogs tried a flanker around and a bomb. You remember that Appleby thing in 75? Herman had to turn around and come back. The ball was not throwing well. Lauren? Well, Larry, I was about to tell you that Georgia had a couple of special plays and it was time to use them. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work. One man splits to the right, slots to the left. Penn State only had three men on the line. Lastinger throws to Herschel out in a flat. And Herschel trying to go and got knocked hard on the 24 back to the 21. They really hit him. They dumped it to Herschel on the left. Penn State didn't have their line set. And Roger Fowles, the outside linebacker, hit him, and the play gained about four. They threw it out in the left flat to Herschel, third down and six. He tried to come back against the green in the middle. And at the moment, it looked like the thing to do. Big third down play here. Penn State now is set. They're in a 4-3. Herschel in motion. Two wide outs. 
Leisinger back to throw in trouble and caught behind the line. One man broke the block. Somebody missed a block back on the 22-yard line, and Leisinger got knocked down back around the 13. Walker Lee Ashley, that great all-eastern defensive left end, Ashley got him. The loss was 10. They put it on the 14. Dogs will have to kick. Penn State will not fumble. They will not throw an interception. And they have forced Broadway back in the end zone on fourth down and 16 to kick. Ten points down. Broadway gets it off. Man close coming in off his right arm. And Kevin Ball fumbled the ball. And it's all over the field. Georgia says they've got it. They may have it. They say they've got it on the 43. I don't know. They haven't said yes. Georgia still says yes. The officials won't say anything. Georgia's got the ball. Penn State dropped it. But there's no time. 538. Kevin Ball fumbled it. He wanted to make a running grab. Melvin Simmons, a kid out of Florida, a blanker recovers. Penn State finally fumbled it. Ball on the 43. And now you say something that maybe should have been said, I don't know, early in this fourth quarter, only now you say it to the offense. Hunker down. Ball on the 43, and the dogs up to the line, and they're 10 down, 27 to 17. One running back, two wide outs left, one split to the right. And here comes Lastinger rolling out to the left, throws in a run, and it's complete in the 26th, and they hit Kevin Harris right away. They may put it on the 27. Yes, they will. Mark Robinson, the safety, hit him. They got about 15 yards on it. Nebraska 21, LSU 17 in the fourth quarter. Nebraska has rallied. Dogs got a first down in the 27. Kevin Harris split to the right. Archie came out. They got an eye. Penn State comes up on a tight 5-3. They fake the Herschel. Lassinger going to dump it across the line. And Clarence Kay, he broke the tackle on the 20, but they knock him down on about the 18. He dumped it over to Kay, and the offense geared up now. But there's only 5.08 to go, and the dogs trying to strike back. Got Radicic, the middle linebacker, and Harry Hamilton. They don't call him a part of a double safety. They call him the hero. That's what they call it on their depth chart. Ball is on the 17 and a half. The game was nine, second and one. Georgia walking up to the line, and they're 10 down. 4.48, they're in an eye. Kevin Harris split wide to the left. Carthy in motion, pitch it to Herschel. He needs a block. He's coming 18, 15, 13 out of bounds. Clock stops 4.38. Look at the clock. The clock says no. Everything says no, no, no. Sidnor knocked him out in Robinson. Cornerback in the safety. So he got what? About five. And the ball is on the 12. Tron Jackson in and Herschel Walker out. Tron Jackson in for the first time. We have no Carney Norris to throw suddenly in there for a change of pace. They're in an eye. Kevin Harris wide out to the right. And Penn State's in a 5-3. And Tron Jackson's in motion. And they run to McCarthy, who got hit hard on the line. He tried to lean back in. Look at the clock saying no. Four and a half minutes. And popping her off. The outside linebacker hit McCarthy. And the play went to just now. Where? Nine and a half, they set it down. Give him only two. It's going to be second down and about seven and a half. Not quite eight. Georgia knocking on the door, 10 down. They got an iron man split out. Tron Jackson in motion again, and Lastinger sprints out. He's in trouble running. He's trying to throw for the corner, and one receiver tipped it away from another, actually, as it turned out incomplete. One man jumped. Clarence Kay was one man down there, and Kevin Harris was behind him about four yards. I don't think Kay knew that he had a chance to catch it. I'm not sure he did either, though I find myself now looking at a replay on it. Yes. Third down on the nine and a half. 27 to 17, Penn State, four minutes. Herman Archie in, Kevin Harris out. And what do you call here? Georgia, nine and a half yards away from getting back in the game and not enough time left. Lastinger out to the right. Going back to the left to a man wide open. Touchdown, Clarence Kay. Georgia 
is called time, 27 to 23, with 3.54 to go. Dogs have called time first before they come up with a play. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. University of Georgia Sugar Bowl football is brought to you by Texaco, Schlitz, Capital Cadillac, and Delco maintenance-free batteries on WSB Radio Atlanta. Lastinger barely got the ball away, came out to the right, running, and a guy blitzing from Lastinger's left, or from the defensive right end, almost got him when he turned around to throw. Lauren? Well, it's obvious what Georgia's decision is. They're deciding whether or not to go for two. I would assume that they would go for two. If they get it, then uh, with a break, they can win it with uh, Kevin Butler's uh, toe. Now, I'm sure they're going to leave Lastinger in there and go for two at this point. We were down too much, weren't we? Dogs may or may not go for two. I don't know. 354. Tim Case has come sprinting on the field at the last second. George is talking about it. Mike Weaver has come out at the guard. Case went in at that left guard. George is breaking Kevin Harrison, Chuck Jones to the right. They're going to go for two. 27 to 23 with 354 to go. And the big Superdome rocks in the smoke, and they go to Herschel. He drives, he fights, but they stop him. He went off to the right, and they hit him on a one and a half. They knocked him back. He tried to come around and keep going, and they wouldn't let him do it. And Penn State stopped the play. Dogs put two flankers out to the right and tried to run a short sweep to Herschel. And Penn State diagnosed it right and stopped it. All Penn State's got to do now is grind out a couple of first downs. Time out here, 30 seconds, local messages, Bulldog Network. You ever had Hardy's homemade rise and shine biscuits? Mm -mm. Don't those fresh baked breakfast biscuits take the prize? Any way you have them with savory ham, tender country, sausage, chopped beef steak, those are real first prize biscuits for sure. There's a homemade biscuit at Hardy's. They call the rise and shine. For a taste of morning glory, just follow the hearty sign. New Hardy's, best breakfast in town. Georgia decided to go for two. They were unsuccessful, and that means that now the dogs must get a touchdown. The field goal is out of the question. Of course, Georgia also has to make a little bit of a decision here. Do they think about the onside kick with three minutes and 54 seconds left to go in the football game? As far as timeouts are concerned, both teams have two left. So Georgia must come out and do a good job defensively. They also have to decide whether to go for the onside kick this would you say early in the ball game? I don't know. That's a decision that Vince Dooley has to make at this time. 3.54, Phil, and of course, a lot of people speculating whether they'll try to squib it or not. Penn State certainly thinks they are going to. They got nine men, almost ten up in their close, but if you're going to stop them, you've got time to get the ball back, but you're four down, you know, you got to come all the way, and besides, you got to stop them. Bill. Now, if they don't put anybody deep, Larry, kick it long and shades of the Notre Dame game. Go down and recover the kick. And right now, they have nobody deep. Sanchez asked the crowd to come up and support him. Another member of the team had earlier. Moore, I think, had waved his hand at him earlier. He just did it again. 354, Penn State 27, Georgia 23. We've been behind all night. Butler going to kick. What kind of a kick? Squibbing it off to the left side, and it went out of bounds, and that hurt. Kicked it out of bounds in the 15. The way we had coverage down that side, Dick, we acted like we were trying to kick it about halfway and recover it on that left sideline. We weren't trying to squib it to a front line. We were trying to give it over that front line and recover it with some speed on the left side. Now we're penalized. Still 354, Penn State reaching for a national championship and leading by four points 27 to 23 got a 20 to 3 lead and dominated that first half and we started coming i know you figure it's too late don't you butler now and the official finally gives a procedure sign against georgia after setting the ball down to the 40 for some reason and then flips it to butler and lets him put it on the tee well penn state has fumbled once and it got us back in there. 
but they're four down. Dogs had two turnovers and hurt themselves in that first half. Penn State now figures we're going to squib it. They got 10 men up in there close around the 50 or the Georgia 46 or 7. They got two receivers of the 25, and Butler kicks it long, and it is going to hook and strike on the 6, bounce straight up. Kevin Ball takes it on the 7 on a bounce and starts across and got hit and knocked down about the 14. Now watch the clock, because the clock is saying no to the dogs, and the dogs almost blown right out of this thing in the first half. Will not quit. Ball on the 14. David Painter made the tackle on the kick-covering team. Horn, Larry, did you see what almost happened? He fumbled the ball and then caught it. We almost had a miraculous break. Penn State's on their own 14 with 3.53 to go. If they eat the clock up, they're a national champion. Kurt Warner's back into the tailback. We haven't intercepted a pass all night. And come close to one. You know they're going to run it right at us now. And our defense is acting that way, too. Penn State on their own 14. And they go to Kurt Warner. And he starts in. And he broke a leg away. And he came all the way out to the 21. He's a tough runner. They had a hole for him on the right side. Payne had an arm on him. Jimmy Payne was slowing him down. Ford said to come over there and Freddie Gilbert. But he got seven big yards. And that hurt second and three. Look at the clock. Breaking your back. Boy, is he strong. He pulled his legs away from somebody after three yards, veering outside to his right or our left, and Payne, bad knees and all, had to come across, and Jimmy had to hit him. Second down, only three for a first down, and Penn State could probably clinch it up. They go to Warner. He comes in, and they hit him on the 24, but it looks like a first down. He had a hole at left guard. Linebackers meeting him there head on. Tommy Thurston took the full run and hoved her over. The official stopped the clock with 3.10. Ball on the 24. That should be enough for a first down from up above, but only by an inch or two. Penn State 27, Georgia 23. Warner limping a little going toward the side. Fighting that bad leg again. I don't know if those cramps keep hitting both legs or not. They might be 3, 4 inches shy. 3.10. The beast of the east only needs a few inches. That's what the paper down here has been calling them. 27 to 23. It took Warner out of the ball game. Again, those legs are bothering, but Georgia must stop Penn State where they are right now. They must stop them. If not on this particular play, at least on the next first down attempt, they get the ball back and with some kind of decent field position. Penn State only needs half a football length for a first down and they sneak it in there and get it. Blackledge, a wise call. They lined up a power eye and he jumped in there and got a yard. Went straight ahead. 2.59 now. Penn State controlling the clock and the scoreboard unless they're going to make a mistake. Ball will be on the 25. It isn't the 75 yards away. It's the time factor in the first down. Look at the second stick away, breaking your back. Man, those dogs fought to come back, didn't they? Jimmy Payne of those, those bad knees, he's still in there. Uh-oh, flag down. They may have done that deliberately, but they marked the clock down to 243. They're killing the clock. If that was a delay. Delay of the game on Penn State. No, a procedure, not a delay of the game. I believe it's the way Greg Garrity, the split end, came and lined up there. 2.43, it was a procedure call. And Todd Blackridge wants to talk to that official and find out what it was about. Puts the ball back in the 20, and State becomes first and 15. If we get our hands back in the ball, men, we'll have no time. We've had one flea flicker tonight, you remember? Kevin Harris to Herschel Walker. Hit the receiver who laterals immediately. It set up a very, very late half score. All right. 2.32. Now less than that, the clock running. Penn State hanging on to a four-point lead. Dogs acting like they're going to blitz the whole world. And they break the fullback, John Williams, out, and he shoots to the 26 or 7. Jeff Sanchez had to grab him or he could have been gone. John Williams running very, very hard. Man, we had six men in the line and two guys jumping in the middle. And he just shot it in there. He 
got seven big yards, second down and eight. Look at the clock, breaking the dog's heart, unless something funny's gonna happen. Penn State up to the line on the 27. 27 to 23, Penn State. One running back, two wide outs left, one to the right. Second down and eight. Blackledge doesn't want to make a mistake. Takes a long count and goes to Williams, and he comes off the tackle. They hit him on the 31. It'll be third down. There's not going to be any time left, even if we stop the play. Now Georgia calls time to stop the clock. Only 97 seconds. Hogan will Ford stopped it. Dog stopped the clock. Penn State has come out to the 31, and this will be their biggest third down play of the night. 97 seconds with a timeout. Timeout 30 seconds here. Local messages, Bulldog Network. Contractors, homeowners, do-it-yourselfers. Go to Kofer Brothers Building Supplies on Main Street in Tucker and see the winning lineup of Quick Read products. From patios to fence posts, from basements to brick walls, Quick Read is quick and easy to use. Just add water and mix. Quick Read offers a complete line of home improvement, maintenance, and repair products. Quick Read is the quick and easy way to tackle any home improvement project. Put Quick Read and Kofer Brothers on your team, and you're sure of an easy win. That's Kofer Brothers Building Supplies on Main Street in Tucker, just two miles outside the perimeter. Kofer Brothers, always helping you build better. It is third down for Georgia, and a third down situation where Georgia must stop Penn State if they are going to get the ball back in this football game. It is a must play for the defense, Larry. Yeah, and they've only got four to go. They're running well. Williams is quick. Remember, he's a tailback by trade. He's a fullback. He's strong, he's a junior, got real good speed, very big third down, but there's no time now, 97 seconds. Warren, what do you got? Got a frustrated sideline, Larry. This team really wants a shot at the ball game, so they're really pleading for the defense to get the ball back. They are all anxious up on their toes, pacing the sideline. I've never seen them more anxious and frustrated. Well, you know, he got it back late in the second quarter and scored in less than 60 seconds. Georgia coming up tight to the line. Penn State's third down, about three and three-quarter yards to go. On and running back, and Blackledge looks, dumps it across the line, complete, and they knock him out on the 38-yard line. That'll be enough. He threw a little quick wide out over to the left side, just dumped it over there and got about six or seven yards, and a first down to the 38 with 92 seconds left. They've got to make a mistake now, or you're not going to see the ball. Penn State controlling the clock and the scoreboard. 27 to 23. This has really been something. But they shoved us around too much in the first half and got out there 20 to 3, and then we started coming with 60 seconds left in the second quarter. Georgia needs a break. They've got to force something here. Blackledge, slot right in an eye. He goes to the tailback, and coming in is Skeeter Nichols. Started right and cut back in and leaned about four or so. Clock running now. Ball up in the 42. Minute and 20, Penn State by four, 27 to 23. It'll be second and seven. Nate Taylor in, Will Forch out. Penn State taking their sweet time. Man, they had a penalty, which gave them first and 15, and they still punched it out. They have got control of that line of scrimmage. Jimmy Payne still playing with those knee operations. 59 seconds only now. Dogs trying to bring everybody, and they hit that fullback. Williams jumps in the middle, only gets a yard or two. But look at the clock now. Georgia will stop the time with 50 seconds. And Penn State may be third down in about five. They need another quick play for a first down. Only 50 seconds now. If you ever see the ball, you're going to see one play, and that's about all you're going to see if you see the ball. Penn State doing what they have to do right now. They're eating it up. It has been a tremendous war. It has been a great comeback. That is if it's going to end this way for the dogs. They have really come back. They've dropped three passes tonight that probably hurt. They weren't all right on somebody's chest, maybe, but they were dropped. Two of them early, you remember. Dean has come back in, and Nate Taylor has come back in. Look at Penn State's only a third down and six. They're up on their own 44. Even if you stop them when they kick, you'll have no field position, and you might have 20 seconds or something, Phil. And, of course, it was the pass that just broke Georgia's back for the first down. And I remember when they were playing Pitt, they had a, a fourth down situation, and they needed short yardage. And they threw what I considered a very dangerous pass into the sideline and completed it. And here again, they came up with the unpredictable play, and uh, it was very successful for Joe Paterno, as, as he called it. And uh, right now, the dogs are in a very, very uh, unenviable position. 
Third down and four. Less than a minute, 50 seconds, that's all. Georgia in a little offset, 4-3. And they run John Williams. He's grabbed by Freddie Gilbert out at the end, and they stop it a yard or two behind the line. Seconds ticking away, though, and they knocked him down one yard behind the line of the 43. Fourth down now in about five and a half. Only 33 seconds. Dogs have no time and no clock. Penn State now will just let the whole thing go, and all they got to do is punt it out of there, and it'll be all over. 17 seconds. Penn State is fourth and six. They are not in a punt formation. Blackledge fourth and six. They're going to. They're just going to run the clock and take a penalty if they have to. And there they take it. Only six seconds. Penn State just stalled it out and took a penalty deliberately. And now they can punt with only six seconds. Georgia can't even return the punt. Penn State 27 to 23. A heartbreaker, yes, but they dominated the first half and clung to that. And they got the long bomb, one shot in the second half, and that, as it turned out, did it for them. Giacomaro, a kick, penalized back to the 38. Fourth and 11, Penn State, but only six seconds now. George is going to try to block the kick. That's all they can do. Jimmy Harrell, the returner, has come off. George is going to just put all 11 men in there and try to get the kick and win the game. That's all. You talk about Hail Mary. It's, it's more than that. They're offside, and they got back. They take a long count and they snap it, and everybody comes in, but he gets a kick off and it's all over. It's bouncing and rolling in a 20 and rolling, it's all over, and Penn State is a national champion. They're pouring out on the field. Georgia shot 11 men in there and couldn't get them. The dogs lost a heartbreaker tonight, 27 to 23. They're trying to carry Joe Paterno off. What do you got, Phil? There was a flag on the play. And if, now the official picked up the flag. <laughs> he picked up the flag and he is running off to the locker room. Yeah. Penn State is won it by four points, 27 to 23, and a tremendous sugar ball for a national championship. Georgia gave it everything they had, and Jimmy Payne with those bad knees, man, didn't he try to give it a shot? Penn State a winner. They are then a national champion. I don't have a Nebraska, by the way, LSU final score yet. Dogs walk off. A lot of seniors will be gone for next year. Penn State is one to one that has eluded them for a long time, despite some unbeaten season some years ago. Bill Schaefer and I will wrap this up for you in 60 seconds. We'll have local break here on the Georgia Bulldog Network. You know, the dogs are the pride of Georgia. So are peanuts. Did you know that almost half of America's peanuts are grown right here in Georgia? That's right. Not only are we good at growing them, we love to eat them, too. We enjoy them as peanut butter, snacks, candies, and hundreds of other ways. Peanuts and the Bulldogs, the pride of Georgia. This Pause for Peanuts is brought to you by the Georgia Peanut Commission. I'm Johnny Lee. I've tasted lots of brews, so take it from a cowboy who knows there's no better tasting beer than Slips. Behind every Slips is a man who knows beer. Ask a man who knows how he picked this one here. If you look around, you know what you found. Behind every Slips is a man who knows his beer. Joseph Slips Brewing Company, no water. The final score, Georgia 23, Penn State 27. Stay tuned for WSB Sports Update and then the Vince Dooley Locker Room Show right here on AM 750 WSB Radio Atlanta. <laughs> University of Georgia Sugar Bowl football on WSB Radio was brought to you by Stereo Village. Much more than just stereo for much less than you'd expect. By Cofer Brothers Building Supplies on Main Street and Tucker. By Hardy's Best Eaten in Town, up and down and all around. The game was also brought to you by Capital Cadillac and Delco Maintenance Free Batteries. By Schlitz, the master's brew. Behind every Schlitz is a man who knows his beer. And by Texaco Super Lead Free Sky Chief, with higher octane to help you knock out the knocks.
Stand by now for the Vince Dooley Locker Room Show. That knocking means another engine needs its knocks knocked out. What am I going to do? For a knockout like you, there's always hope. Try Texaco Super Unleaded, Texaco's highest octane unleaded gasoline. Higher octane helps knock out the knocks. Hey, knockout, how's your engine sound now? Smooth, thanks to Texaco Super Unleaded. Higher octane helps knock out the knocks. You knock me out, Bob. Robinson Humphrey stockbrokers frequently hear people say they'd like to get more money or profit out of what they're putting into their investments. But the first thing you need to know about yields or returns on investments is the basic rule. The higher the yield, the higher the risk. So, if you're unhappy with your yield, you need to see if you're willing to assume more risk. Robinson Humphrey can help you with the full range of investment vehicles. It depends on your investment objectives. For answers to questions about making money, call Robinson Humphrey American Express. Good evening. After the 27-23 victory over Georgia in the Sugar Bowl, Penn State will be thinking they have the national title, but the SMU Mustangs will think otherwise. Just when it seemed that all the good fortune had at last drained out of its tank, Destiny's team found it had one final magical bounce of the ball remaining. And with the football ricocheting at just the right moment off just the right person into just the right set of hands, the number four SMU Mustangs overcame the number six Pittsburgh Panthers seven to three Saturday in the 47th Cotton Bowl to complete their first unbeaten season in some 34 years. It may have been cold and damp and it may have sleeted in the second half and there may have been 11,000 no-shows but it mattered not to the Mustangs who in the past four years have risen from the depths of college football to one of the best teams in the land. If we're not number one, there has got to be a pretty good team that is number one, said coach Bobby Collins, who has yet to lose as head coach of the Mustangs. We're undefeated. I don't know what else we'd have to do. In Tempe, Arizona, but for a few extra pounds on freshman sensation Marcus Dupree, Oklahoma coach Barry Switzer figures the Sooners lost to Arizona State in Saturday's Fiesta Bowl could have been turned around. He's a little overweight, Switzer said, of the 240-pound Dupree, who rushed for a Fiesta Bowl record of 239 yards in the 32-21 loss to 11th-ranked Arizona State. Marcus would have scored two touchdowns if he would have played at 228 instead of 240 like he did today, Switzer said. Dupree had two runs of 56 yards and one of 48, but was caught from behind all three times. ASU coach Darrell Rogers didn't notice Dupree's extra weight. I don't know if he, if we have played any back like Marcus Dupree, Rogers said. He deserves all the accolades he receives. Rogers also noted that the hamstring injury that knocked Dupree out of action in the third quarter made the Sun Devils' victory just a little bit easier. Back closer to home, the Atlanta Braves have re-signed second baseman Glenn Hubbard to a guaranteed five-year, $3.5 million contract, reportedly making him one of the highest-paid second basemen in baseball. The contract, which was negotiated with Atlanta general manager John Mullen by Hubbard's agent Vernon Spratley, also includes incentives that could boost the 25-year-old second baseman's salary to $4 million over the next five years. Hub was only four years, he has only four years of major league service and is still two years away from the time he could be a free, free agent, Spratley said. And the Braves generally don't like to give long-term contracts to players who are that far away from free agency. But John Mullen felt very confident about Hub's desire and the fact he gives 100% every game. That's a quote from the agent. Last season, Hubbard hit 248 and led the league in sacrifices as the Braves won the National League West title. A source with the Braves said the contract makes Hubbard baseball's fourth highest paid second baseman. Top ranked junior middleweight Tony Aiea is being held on charges of sexually assaulting a woman and burglarizing her home. Police in West Patterson, New Jersey say the 19 year old boxer was arrested early today at a sprawling garden apartment complex. He is charged with breaking into a woman's apartment, sexually assaulting her, beating her, and burglarizing her home. Safety Don Rogers sparked a swarming UCLA defense and Blanchard Montgomery returned an interception for a touchdown. 
leading the fifth-ranked Bruins of UCLA to a 24-14 win over Big Ten champion Michigan in the 69th Rose Bowl. The victory at Pasadena, California gave the Pacific Ten champions a 10-1-1 and -1 record over the course of the year. The 17th-ranked Wolverines finished the season at 8-4 with the loss. Their second to UCLA this season. Rogers UCLA's junior free agent, uh, free safety that is, turned in the finest game of his career. He stopped Michigan's only serious scoring threat in the first half with an interception at the 19-yard line. He knocked starting quarterback Steve Smith out of the game with a shoulder separation hit, and he made 11.